So we're going to talk about continuous random variables, which was a lot like what we did in the last section, but now we don't have to use only counting numbers. We can use numbers with decimals and fractions and any kind of thing like that. So we're going to talk about the probability density function. So the graph of a continuous probability distribution is a curve. So think of like the normal distri distribution curve that you saw when you were in introductory stats. It's that really pretty bell-shaped curve. And remember, we tried to make estimations about what goes on under the curve so that we could make probabilities for certain groups of people, animals, stuff like that. So the probability is represented by the area under the curve. So if anybody's taking calc, Basically, this is calculus. Calculus always wants to know the area for stuff that is not easy to find, like curves. So the curve is called the probability density function, and we put this as PDF. We use the symbol f of x to represent the curve. f of x is the function that corresponds to the graph. We use the density function to draw the graph of a probability distribution. Again, as we keep going through this chapter, and they're not all going to be curves, but this is what we mainly talk about. So cumulative distribution function, and we saw that a little time. If you go back and think about what we did in binomial, if I use the binomial PDF, that was the ex exact value. If I use the CDF, it was everything and below and this is where we come into it i didn't do this in binomial because i didn't want to confuse you but it this is really what you did in binomial so the area under the curve is given by a different function called the cumulative distribution function or the cdf the cumulative distribution function is used to evaluate probabilities as an area the outcomes are measured and not counted like what we did before. And the entire area under the curve and above the x-axis is equal to 1. So if you think about it, that bell-shaped curve, if you were doing normal distribution, the whole area under the curve is 1. And probability is found for intervals of x values rather than individual x values. This is basically normal distribution. I want to know groups of people or below a group, above a group, this is what we use that for. So if the probability of C is less than X is less than D, it's the probability that a random variable X is an interval between the values of C and D. The probability of C less than X less than D is the area under the curve above the X axis to the right of C and to the left of D. So the probability X equals C equals zero. The probability that X takes on a single individual value is zero. We don't, we're not doing that in this. The area below the curve, above the axis, and between C, between X equals C and X equals C has no width. Therefore, there's no area. Since the probability is equal to the area, the probability is also zero. Again, when you're doing that normal distribution curve, and we'll get to that in the next section, it's always going to be zero because you can't do an exact value. Where would the, remember binomial, I got the exact values. I can't do that here. And this is because my values can be any kind of number. And if I'm looking under a curve, I can't be very precise like that because it's zero. So if P is C, C is less than X is less than D is the same as C is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to D because the probability is equal to that area. Remember, that was so different in binomial. You put that equal sign and it changed how you read it. For cumulative distribution functions, it doesn't matter. And again, this is for continuous variables. So there's three that we're going to talk about in this chapter. The first is uniform. As you can see, it has the uniform height as I go from here. So like this one goes from two to, I guess, like let's say 8.75. And I'm looking for the area of between three and six, which is in purple. Another one is the exponential distribution. You'll see this with like bacterial growth, virus growth. So again, it goes, it, it has this area that it's not, it's not a bell-shaped curve, but it's going up. So the probability of 2 is less than x is less than 4, and you can see here in purple. 
Normal distribution, we're gonna get to this. So this is that really pretty area I was talking about, the bell-shaped curve. So from here to here, all this, including the purple, equals one, the area under the curve. But if I wanna find the area between one and two, I'm gonna look for this probability in purple, and it's gonna be one minus whatever, whatever the area in white gives me the area in purple. If you don't remember it, it's okay. We're going to go through it soon. All right. So we begin by defining the continuous probability density function. We use the notation again of f of x. All right. So you might have remembered this from algebra, and we're going to write it of f as x. So remember for this, this is the most important thing about this slide. You can read it. For continuous probability distribution, probability equals the area. That's all we're saying. The area under the curve is the same as the probability. That's it.